at a clash. So, what did IPOP do? That you promptly declared them a terrorist group in 2017, I think about August. IPOP is known to be clamoring for one thing self determination. Self determination is a right recognized by the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights of 1948. It is recognized by the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. It is recognized by the European Convention of Human Rights. It is recognized by the American Intergovernmental Convention of Human Rights. Excuse me. <coughs> it is recognized by the Indigenous People's Rights <coughs> Instrument. It is recognized by this, this civilized world. That where a people feel they are suffocating under a particular system, like the Nigerian system, which they call federalism, which is actually unitary, they have a right to seek for self-determination. Whoever knew that USSR, the former Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, would break up into smithereens, into above 15 independent nations. Eritrea and Ethiopia used to be one country. Today, they are two sovereign countries. Sudan and Southern Sudan used to be one country. Today, they are separate countries. India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh used to be one country. Today, they are separate countries. So, you cannot say a people cannot seek for self-determination if the system <clears throat> or that way they are presently be head together, being coupled together, forcibly, is no longer working, or is now asphyxiating, or is hemorrhaging, or is suffocating. They can seek for self-determination. That is all that IPOB has been saying. I was saying, and we all see IPOB, we see them moving on the streets, blowing whistle, wearing berets, Singing, dancing, with clubs. How does that make them a terrorist group? The military high command in 2017 first quickly came out before the formal proscription through the office of the Attorney General under Section 2 of the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 that IPOM was hereby banned. And what was the offenses according to the military high command? You can take, you can Google it by yourself. Say they were carrying clubs, they were throwing pebbles and stones, and that they seized a rifle from a female military officer and two rifles from other military officer. That was why they declared them terrorist group. But Boko Haram, that has been ravaging Nigeria, killing Nigerians in their homes, on the streets, in the markets in churches, in mosques, bombing. You have not declared them terrorist groups specifically. Boko Haram, that is occupying swaths of land in the northern part of Nigeria, particularly in the northeast, controlling many local government areas, with the governor crying out, controlling many local government areas, in Niger state, with the governor crying out, Boko Haram, that now give passes, set up their own government, and impose taxes on the indigents, that they must pay tax, and they must pay certain tithes and certain dues, and with a pass before they can pass, before they can go somewhere. You haven't seen such a group that is challenging your sovereignty and your sovereignty challenging your legitimacy as a terrorist group that is double speak by this government and it is this kind of double speak this kind of self-contradiction that the insecurity is still festering and ravaging you you need to do things holistically using the same rule. Not rule of law for some people 
and the rule of the thumb for others. It cannot work. A group is challenging your legitimacy, making your state look like a failed state. And one of the greatest indices of a failed state, apart from blended poverty, which we are already in, being the poverty capital of the world, having overtaken India, apart from corruption, monumental corruption, which we are already in, be rated by transparency international. Whether the transparency anti-corruption perception index in 2022 has the one, number 149 out of 180 countries in the world most corrupt. And the second most corrupt country in West Africa. Those ones are already there as indices of a failed or failing state. But one of the greatest indices of a failed state is when non-state actors like Boko Haram, like armed bandits, like kidnappers, begin to challenge the supremacy of legitimate government, dictating the pace in terms of violence, inflation of violence, in terms of control of instruments, of coercion, of violence. That is a failed state. You don't need any other definition. And that is going on in Nigeria, where, where Boko Haram and armed bandits we attack the very institution of defense, the Nigerian Defense Academy, and take away some officers, killing one of them. Where Boko Haram, kidnappers, we kidnap some students in Kaduna, Kaduna State, and then dictate to the government and the parents of these children to buy their bags of rice, bags of gari, bags of beans, to buy their tomatoes, tarodo, tatashi, vegetable oil, palm oil, even dictating the quantity that will be bought, that must be bought for them, so that they can feed their children who are under captivity for the purpose of extracting ransom from the parents. That is a failed state. You don't need any definition, other definition for it. So, the president, after the attorney general did this work, gazetting these two groups as, as um, terrorist groups, had done well. But he has not done very well. He fell far short of going the whole hog. Declare Boko Haram, mention it specifically. You are hereby declared a terrorist group. Miyeti Allah, you that are the owning up to killings, to attacks on innocent villagers, owning up to sending people, you are hereby declared a terrorist group. These are more terrorist inclined than IPOB that were blowing whistle and marching on the streets, carrying club that's a way we want to be afra we won't be afra that was that was what you categorize as terrorism and then you now put away their leader <coughs> the leader of ipo mazi nandekano he was even captured in kenya and forcibly brought to nigeria he's in detention <clears throat> when Nigerians, this government particularly, I need to drum it to the ears of this government. Because with all respect, this government appears dumb. And it appears numb. And it appears deaf. And it appears blind. Let me drive it home. When an idea, when the time of an idea has come, you can't stop it. Adaka Boro was killed for an idea. That did not stop the agitation in the Niger Delta. Kensaru Wewa was murdered, judicial murder, for an idea. That did not stop the crisis in the Niger Delta. Igboho is kept away, at least somewhere in Republic of Benin. That has not stopped the Yorubas in their agitation for self-determination. The, the Igbos that want 
self-determination, which has been spearheaded by IPO, which I've already shown is a non-violent organization. And the man is kept in prison. Even with him being in prison, the people obey his orders and his instructions. If you say don't go to the market, all the markets in the southeast are shut down. If you say you may now go, they all go. No government can give those directives and they are, they are, they are obeyed. It shows that that young man in detention is not compelling or forcing the people. Rather, the people are merely galvanized for an idea that they believe in. If they do not believe and they say sit at home, all of them will say go to hell. They, in fact, they, for that reason alone, they will say, since he has told us to sit at home, it is today we will all now go out. Anybody knows that the average Igbo man is independent-minded and is very, is highly republican. That you cannot force things on him or her, but for them to follow that man in incarceration, that shows that it is an idea that is fighting for that they believe in, trying to say that we are not that dot in the large cycle as seen by Mr. President. So my honest advice to Mr. President and his advisors or advisors is to say, seek a political solution to this Nam the Kanu matter. I agree with the President in his interview when he said he cannot interfere with the judicial process. I do agree. He should not be seen to interfere with the judicial process. I score him very highly there. But then, we also know that there are political solutions to issues that are festering, that are not going away. You cannot treat a serious ailment like leprosy with medicine meant for eczema. So you must have to square up to it. Have we not seen cases? where an attorney general under section 174 of the constitution enter a nolly prosecute by saying this crime should no longer be prosecuted release the person let him go and see no more that is a political solution that does not mean that the president would have would have interfered with the judicial process because the right person to do it the attorney general of the federation under sections 150 and 174 of the constitution has done his own job after taking instructions from Mr. President. It is not by Mr. President going to the court to tell the judge, Justice Bintanyako, and say, hello, hands off this matter. Don't try it. No. So he is right to say he cannot be seen to interfere with the judicial process. I call him very highly there. But Mr. President, sir, you can do it politically by instructing the Attorney General of the Federation who is also your Minister of Justice, to say, enter a knowledge prosecute. We want this matter settled. This agitation should go away. These are my children. The Igbo people are part and parcel of this country. They are not a dot in the cycle. They are not the three over, nine, over, 90, over 95 percent voters whether they voted for you or not the important thing is that you won your elections the day you won your elections you became president of the federal republic of nigeria no president of some aspects against some aspects or minus some aspects or excluding some aspects that is where mr president is missing it so he must see nigeria as one whole unit an aggregate not as perforated. He must see Nigeria as that Dolly Parton's coat of many colors, linguistically different, religiously different, ethnically different, but with all having a, com a common purpose, which was why some people blamed or some people did not think Amadou Bello did well when he said in 1942 during the debate in the Hansa 
that Nigeria was a piece of historical mistake. I wrote this book, written in 1948, also saw Nigeria as a piece of geographical expression. That there are no Nigerians, in the true sense, that there are Irish people, or the Scottish people, or the English people. He was right. That was why when Zeke during the independence agitation told Amadou Bello the Sadana of Sakoto who later became the premier of Northern Region why Zeke became premier of Eastern Region. He said Zeke told Amadou Bello we should forget our differences Amadou Bello gave him the right answer. He said, no. Namdi Azikiwe, we should not forget our differences. We should recognize our differences. That you are an Igbo man and a Christian. That I'm a Fulani and a Muslim. But that these are differences, have we recognized them? We should now decide to walk towards the same goal. He's called the bull's eye. Are we doing that today? Is the presidency promoting that unity, that unism that we ought to see when 97% or more of the entire security apparatchet of the country is made up of one section of the country, one religion, those making you prebendalistic, chronistic, sectionalistic, using favoritism and rule and divide tactics. Can't Mr. President see that the country is bleeding, is hemorrhaging, and that we are actually following, ironically and unfortunately, the social theory of Cloud, Ake, and other eggheads like him. The Nigeria is operating a disarticulate economy where we produce what we do not consume and consume what we do not produce. Can't Mr. President see that? Didn't Mr. President and others, the leaders, the leading lights of APC, were they not on the streets in January 2012 in Operation Close Down Nigeria in Abuja and Lagos and in Badan and Oshobo? over removal of oil subsidies because they said the Jonathan government was lying that there was nothing like subsidy on oil and in any case if there was a subsidy it was only benefiting the few but that they should not remove it they demonstrated Jonathan had increased the foil price to I think about a hundred naira and then that forced him to bring it to 97 from about 88 naira per liter. This government has already increased the price of oil on about two occasions. Today it's about 165 naira. They are still threatening. They are now calling the final removal of subsidy. And I ask the question, which subsidy? The one you said was not there in January 2012? So we have to be interrogative. We must challenge authority. We must speak truth to authority. We must challenge impunity. We have to ask APC and Mr. President, you promise us that the Naira will exchange at one Naira to one dollar when you become president. You met it at between 170 and 180 Naira per the dollar. Today in the black market, the Naira is 558 and 559 Naira. I'm still counting to the dollar. In the government official rate, is over 400. You met it at about 180 maximum. You told us that you will lead from the front as a retired military general, and that you will crush Boko Haram within three months of your coming to power. Six and a half years later and more, I'm still counting. Boko Haram is waxing stronger and stronger. So, you failed on that it is. Then you told us we wipe out corruption. 
But today, corruption is trotting about like a proud peacock. Where under Jonathan, Yaradwa, and Obasajo, corruption was democratized, allowing the sip down syndrome, allowing everybody to see it and chop. Today, corruption has been privatized. It is in the pockets of less than 0 0.5 percent of the 213 point. 9 million Nigerians by United Nations projection. Again, in that area, Mr. President has failed and his government has failed. Then you told us the third Chapoda promise. You will straighten Nigeria's economy and we will have one of the best economies in the world. Mr. President, sir, in 2015, you made the Nigerian economy rebased by the World Bank and the IMF at over 500 billion dollars nigeria over took south africa to the and made south africa to become second nigeria became the seventh fastest growing economy in the world mr president sir today nigeria is number 149 out of 180 most corrupt countries in the world as observed by Transparency International in their Anti-Corruption Perception Index. And Nigeria is the second most corrupt country in West Africa. Again, Mr. President, sir, with all respect, you have again failed in that area. So, sir, what do we do? You see, I have approximately one and a half years to do some magic, some magic, some miracle. Great presidents are known in times of difficulties. Harry Truman, David Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, the man who on the 19th of November 1893, 1863, at his Gettysburg Declaration in Delaware, Define democracy as government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Winston Churchill is remembered today for his role during the Second World War. So he becomes immortal, imperishable in the hands, in the, in the hearts of the Britons. Martin Luther King Jr., a young man, took up the challenge where Rosa Park stopped. Rosa Park had been told to vacate her seat for some white people at Montgomery in Alabama, in the United States of America. All the seats reserved for whites had been occupied. The only few ones with many at the back, near the toilet, were for the blacks. And some whites came and said, vacate your seat. She said, no, I'm too tired. I will not be able. I will not do so. They dragged her up, threw her out, and that started the civil rights movement that, that swept across America. And Martin Luther King Jr. took it up from there. He walked. So there is a saying that where Rosa Parks sat, Martin Luther King Jr. walked so that Obama could could run. Obama has run so that our children can fly. So great leaders are not given to damage assessment or lamentations. When Obama ascended America's presidency in January 2009, he did not go into the books of lamentation as to what how president bush jr had taken america virtually into recession everybody knew it but he just started focus with his eye on the ball started obamacare the republicans were even fighting him not to succeed but the democrats were fully with him there was no lacrima effusion. There was no tears, tearing, tearing up. 
He squared up to the job. Because he asked for the job. Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump before he was sworn in January 2021. He had already assembled virtually the entire cabinet. So he hit the ground running. But we saw this government, which was never prepared for governors. They were rather prepared for the bamboo being soaked in his blood. For violence, that is the major participant. Then God touched the heart of that great African Democrat. President, Dr. Good luck, Ebele Jonathan. Who, why is the force we are still being counted in Kano? Called President Buhari, their candidate, Buhari, say Mr. President, sir. Congratulations. The president could not believe it. God bless President Buhari because on three occasions at least I've watched him say it. That Jonathan shocked him and surprised him. That what he did, not many people in the world can ever do that. So, he congratulated Mr. President. The power you wanted, you couldn't get it in 2003. You failed in 2007. You cried in 2011 after leave, saying that you will never campaign again. But somehow, there was a coalition of forces, different political parties, cobbled together to drive away the PDP from power. And you won. Because they were not prepared for governors. That was why six months later, it took up to six months before they could assemble a mere cabinet of ministers, with many of them non-performing ministers. So, Mr. President, sir, when the going gets tough, only the tough gets going. Trying times are what bring out the best in leaders, quality leaders. Don't lament over the past. No, sir. History beckons on you to put your name into the pantheon of heroes that govern Nigeria. Apart from Obasanjo, you are the only Nigerian who has had a rare privilege of being both a military head of state and a civilian president. To whom much is given, sir? Much is expected. So Nigerians look up to you to re remove the present grinding poverty, abject penury, the crimson red blood flowing on the streets and in our farms, to remove the state of neither, neither if we have found themselves, the melancholy, the gnashing of teeth, the tears, sorrows, and blood. Finally, hand over power. Whether you can do it or not, time shall tell. But it is in your own interest sir, to do something so that you remain on the good side of history so that when Nigerians remember you they will remember you with kind feelings not with hatred not with spite not with regret as to why they brought you in on that serious populism remember sir Mr. President one young man checked from Lagos to Abuja to celebrate your victory. Remember, sir, how that young man rode a bicycle from Kaduna to Abuja to celebrate your victory. Remember, sir, that there was euphoria across the country. Sir, so take a drive deliberately under camouflage, incognito, around the cities of Abuja or any other city in Nigeria, pretend you are not Mr. President. I see that Nigerians are like 
the walking corpses or the living dead envisaged by Ayi Kwe Ama in his epic The Beautiful Ones are not yet born. Do something about it, sir. So that we will not still fall into that category also envisaged by Ayikwe Ama. The same Ayikwe Ama. The Chichi Dodo Bird. The Chichi Dodo Bird is human excrement. With all his heart. With all his soul. But you know it's, it's food, sir. When a person is defecating in the forest, the bird perches by to watch the human physics decay. And then maggots start wriggling out of those physics. The food of the bird, that his human physics is actually maggots that wriggle out of human physics. In other words, you cannot say you you hate beans with all your heart and soul and your best food is akara and momoi such is contradictory you cannot play hamlet without the prince of denmark you cannot argue that six is different from half a dozen sir the time is short History beckons on you. Don't attempt to play Romeo without Juliet. The people are your constituency. They elected you into office. Another section 14 of the Constitution. Say power belongs to the people through whom people in government derive their authority to act. So this power belongs to the people exercises sir, in their favor not to do so is to argue that you